Well, hello. This week we have a Dell Latitude 3540. Now, this has come in for a screen replacement. So I'm conscious that the last few videos have been about older laptops. And I realized that if, if I'm gonna get in one to fix, it's more likely to be something like this. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take the board out of this. The board is fully functional on it. Like I said, it's only the screen is cracked and I'll be replacing that. But I said I'd use the opportunity to take the motherboard out of this and get a look of it and maybe take some measurements. Just in case another one of these comes in, then I can compare it to the measurements because this is quite a popular laptop. I think the same motherboard is also in the 3440. So let's take out the motherboard and have a look at it. This is the motherboard I've just scanned it in. So as you can see, it came out quite well. So what am I going to do with this? Well, I think we should do two things. I think number one, we should take the measurements at all of the inductors so that we know what the voltage should be at all the inductors and what the resistance and diode measurements should be there. And I think what we'll do is we'll try and do a little tour from the DC jack in. Now, I thought I had a schematic for this, but it was for some old board that happened to have the same model number. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right here. Let me zoom in for you and show you how well this turned out. Look at that. Don't thank me, thank Epson. So this is where we start. And I am going to try not to blow anything up because this motherboard is working. And I'm going to take down some measurements. So follow along with me. So with my charger plugged in and my multimeter in volts DC in the 20 volt range, we're gonna start taking some measurements. So I'll place my black probe to ground down, right down here. And I'm gonna introduce my red probe here and we're gonna start to take some measurements. So the first measurement we wanna take is where it comes in on our DC input jack. So I can see here that just from experience, I can see that this comes onto a MOSFET here and onto a diode. So I'm gonna presume that this is the positive input. So I place my probe to the pins here and I find out that there is 19.85 at this point. I've zoomed in just a little bit just to get a better picture, but we can see that our 19.85 comes across here and onto this part of the circuit. So let's just mark that in. And then onto the pins of this MOSFET right here. So this is an Aon 21321. Let's find out what that is. This is the data sheet for that MOSFET. We can see that it's a 30 volt P channel MOSFET. And if we look at the pin configuration of that, pins one, two, and three are source pins. Pin four is our gate pin. And then all of the pins on either side, five, six, seven, and eight are all drain pins. So as we know with a P channel MOSFET, if the gate is low, it switches the MOSFET on. So let's have a look at the one on the circuit. Back to our circuit board, I'm gonna mark in those pins on our actual IC right here. So as you can see, pins one, two, and three are source pins. On pin four, we've got a gate, and then all of the pins on either side are drain pins. Even though they look like they're in groups of you know two pins here and two pins here, the drain is these four pins together, and that leads on to a second MOSFET right here. So when I measure at our gate, I find that there is 3.26 volts. That is low, so that should switch our MOSFET on. And I measure on any of the drain pins on the other side, and I find that there is 19.85 volts on the other side of our MOSFET. And that MOSFET leads on to uh, the drain pins of our second MOSFET. Now, as you can clearly see, the second MOSFET is the same as the first MOSFET, except it's turned around the other way. So we have our drain pins on this side, and we have our source pins on this side and our gate pin. Let me mark that in, just so it's clear. So right now we have 19.8 volts on our drain pins, and what needs to happen here is, if our gate pin is low, that MOSFET switches on and allows the 19.85 from our drain pins to our source pins. So I take a measurement at the gate and I find that there is 1.8 volts here, which is low. So that should be allowing the 19.8 volts true. I take a measurement here, or maybe it's just easier to measure at the, mo at the capacitor here. And I find that there is 19.8 volts here. Now, as you can see, this is a familiar configuration with these laptops. So we have our input section, we have a TVS diode, uh, that's for protection. This leads on to a first MOSFET, then on to a second MOSFET, 
and that usually leads on to a current sense resistor but it doesn't look like there's any here now what may be happening is that current se sense resistor may still exist but it may be at another part of the board so I'm gonna go searching around and see if we can find that current sense resistor apologies guys I meant to draw in the path as I was doing this but the path follows from here so here's our 19.85 volts coming in on the input it goes across this diode here and onto the source pins of the first MOSFET through that MOSFET because it's switched on and onto the drain pins and then down here and onto the drain pins of the second MOSFET this MOSFET is also switched on so our 19.85 volts is coming through to here and we're now searching for our current sense resistor okay so where do we even start about trying to find that current sense resistor without a schematic well the good thing about current sense resistor is they look pretty unique so if you look at this section up here let me just zoom in to close the where it is. You should be able to identify two current sense resistors on this part of the board. So what I'm going to suggest to you is that you pause the video and see if you can identify the two current sense resistors. The two current sense resistors are this one here and this one here. So I need to identify which one of these is on the input power rail. And what I'm going to do to identify that is use a simple continuity check so let's do that next so with the power switched off and with my multimeter in continuity mode which looks like this on my digital multimeter I place my black probe to the other side of the second MOSFET the, you can place it to these source pins here but it's actually easier just to place it on this capacitor because it's got a bigger pad so what we need to do is check for continuity then so I move back up and with my red probe I place it to I place it to this current sense resistor down here and there's no beep so I then know that this is going to be the input power rail current sense resistor I place my probe here and it does beep so we've continuity between here and here and just to verify that I turn my multimeter into volts DC in a 20 volt range again and switched the power on and took a voltage measurement to that current sense resistor and when I did I found that there is 19.85 volts there now when we establish that our main power rail is present at the current sense resistor the next check we usually carry out is to go down to the secondary circuits and make sure that we have that same 19 volts or 20 volts at our secondary circuit because that's the input that the secondary voltages are derived from let me just quickly show you with the laptop we did last week so for example we had our 19 volt coming in from the adapter it goes through first MOSFET second MOSFET and then through a current sense resistor and then that 19 volts is sent down to all of our secondary circuits however this Dell laptop implies an ISL 9538C as the battery management IC and as you can see here we have our voltage coming in here there's a resistor ladder and an AC pin to check that input we have what it calls optional MOSFETs here we've actually seen that they are present on the configuration of this Dell that leads on to our current sense resistor which we've located however the voltage then at this point is not sent down to the other secondary voltage circuits it's going into a high side low side MOSFET configuration here across an inductor and then into another pair of high side low side MOSFETs and then is relabeled as VSYS and this VSYS is then sent out to all of our secondary circuits now we've measured the current and our current sense resistor here and we know there's 19.85 volts so I need to know if our VSYS is present and what it is so the difficulty with that is I've located the chip here and I've superimposed the pinouts on it so we can identify that our VSYS is actually this pin right here now as you can see the difficulty is how do I get a tiny probe in and measure here without touching off this or this so if we go back to our circuit diagram you can see that VSYS is connected straight down to the second current sense resistor that's going down to the battery so it's probably going to be a lot safer for me to measure VSYS at our current sense resistor then try and get in at that small tiny pin on the IC itself so let's measure VSYS at the current sense resistor and see what it comes up as 
this is our second current sense resistor right here. This is the one that's referred to as RS2 on the previous diagram. So what we need to do is measure the current here. So if I place my black probe to ground, put my digital multimeter in volts mode in a 20 volt range, and then I place my red probe here, and what I measure is 13.2 volts. So that I'm measuring 13.2 volts at RS2, so what that means is RS2, the voltage right here, which is essentially Vsys, is 13.2 volts. So we're getting 19.85 volts in, and it's giving us Vsys, which is 13.2 volts out. So I want to see now, are we getting that 13.2 volts at all of our secondary circuits? So if I move down the board, and um, we can see a couple of our secondary circuits right here. So if you can see this, even by looking at this, you can probably identify what's going on. This looks like the input right here. And this is our IC, and then we have our output. So I would be expecting to see our input voltage here, and then this breaks it down to a smaller voltage, which we'll see on the output. And what I do is in volts DC, I'll place my black probe to ground. So we find a ground here, I get my red probe, and place it right here. And what I find is that our 13.2 volts is present here. So it is present at the first of our secondary circuits. Scrolling down, still measuring in volts DC once again. I take a measurement right here. I find that there's 13.2 volts here also. And similarly, scrolling down to our next circuit, I take a measurement on the input to this secondary circuit, and I find that there's 13.2 volts here as well. So that Vsys is the secondary, sorry, is the, is the power rail that's sent down to all of our secondary circuits and the secondary voltages are derived from that 13.2 volts. So that's a quick look at how the voltage comes into the Dell 3540 and how it's broken down to 13.2 volts and sent out to all the secondary circuits. The other thing I wanted to do was to take note of all of the measurements at each of the inductors because I think that might be useful for when another one of these comes in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and measure at each of all of the inductors here. Um, I'm going to measure the voltage at each inductor with the power turned on and then I'm going to take both a diode reading and a resistance reading with the laptop switched off obviously. So let me do that now. This last section of the video is just going to be me reading out the values that I took at each of the inductors so unless that is of interest to you you're probably better off bailing at this stage and I'll see you next week. But I'm going to go around all the inductors right now and read out the values that I took. So at PL4551, I measured 5 volts, 3 kilo ohms, and 0 0.4 volts in diode mode. At PL5101, I measured 1.2 volts. Uh, I measured 325 ohms in resistance mode and 0 0.25 volts in diode mode. At PL4501, I measured 3.3 .3 volts. Uh, I measured 3 kilo ohms resistance and 0 0.8 volts in diode mode. At PL5301, I measured 1.8 volts. I measured 1.3 kilo ohms in resistance mode and 0 0.25 in diode mode. At PL, what is that? PL, must be PL4401, is it? I measured 12.15 volts with the laptop on, 20 kilo ohms with the power off in resistance mode, and 0 0.512 in diode mode with the power off. Uh, at PL4801, with the laptop turned on, there was no voltage on this. I think this might only be powered on if there's uh, extra current draw. But it measured 33.8 ohms in resistance mode and 0 0.025 volts in diode mode. Uh, for the two of these inductors, which are both going to the CPU, I measured 0 0.8 volts when it was switched on. When it was switched off, I measured 50 ohms and 0 0.035 volts in diode mode. Now that's interesting because we're always looking to see what should the lowest legitimate reading be, you know, for any of the inductors. But I've measured 33 ohms on this one here and 50.8 on this one here. And as we know, this laptop is working. And finally, on this inductor over here, it doesn't have a label beside it. I think it's PL5001, but I measured 1.8 volts on this, 250 ohms, and 0 0.15 volts in diode mode. What I'm going to try and do with these guys is I'm going to try and export it to a JPEG, 
and upload it because I'm sure there will be people who watch this video who just want to print off and compare the values. But that's all I got for this week. I hope you learned something from this. I certainly did by going through it myself anyway. And that's the purpose of these because I'm trying to learn this stuff as well. So that's a modern laptop, what it looks like, what the input section looks like and how the main power rail is generated. So please like and subscribe and put any comments you want below, positive or negative, I don't mind. Put them in the comments below and I'll talk to you next week.